It is so cold. They are probably more cold in Cape Town, in the world. But this one is specifically operating in Cape Town. I think I know just enough of being involved just enough to be like, this cannot happen to anybody else. Like a lot of people by the time, like I said, when they get out of it, they just don't want to talk about it. They don't want, they just want to forget it. Okay, so this is a completely different video, much different from anything I've ever posted and I think just more objective as well. You are reading really right, I was part of a cult for uh, a few months. It happened really recently, it was just over a month ago that I found out it was actually a cult. Um, the way that I was recruited into it, it's like the, it was presented to me as a Christian uh, Bible study, but actually it was not. Um, but yeah, so it's not, it's not like abnormally, um, like I've, I've, I know quite a few people who've been approached by them and I think that's why I, and I'm just one person, that's why I like have this, I need to create more awareness, just that more people will not be kind of thrown into it. And then they figure out who these people actually are, what they're actually doing behind the scene. The cult that I'm talking about is Shen Chunji. They are called Shen Chunji and they profess to be Christians. They think what they're doing is God's work and part of God's will. And you know, um, yeah, so so I'm just gonna read from godquestions.org. This is Shen Chunji is a very large, very successful cult. The group is headed by a single charismatic leader, Lee Man Hee, who claims to have the, a special ability to interpret the Bible. When challenged about his authority, Lee can be evasive, but he frequently implies that he is immortal and that salvation requires faith in him rather than faith in Jesus Christ. Lee's Shinshanji Church teaches that the Bible is primarily composed of metaphors and he alone has a spiritual gift for correctly interpreting them. So basically that is what it is and I didn't just figure this out off the bat, they, have, they operate very secretively, they didn't even disclose that they were this cult. Um, so I'm just going to start right from the beginning so you can have some context with like just how they work. Um, so I was approached on Instagram, this girl, she followed me on Instagram and she appeared to be normal. like nothing screamed her flag. She professed to be a Christian. Um, she she followed me on Instagram, followed her back. She DM'd me, so we were chatting like back and forth and so yeah, everything was fine. Eventually we changed numbers and so we were chatting on WhatsApp and just like, you know, what what you're doing, blah blah blah, like very like basic conversation but she was very intentional about it. I was like, ah, oh, that's sweet. She invited me to like this Christian online event um, and she said like a friend invited her and when she heard about it she just thought of me and it's like can we join virtually together and I was like I don't see the harm in this like I'm not busy this evening or whatever because it was that same day I was like I won't be busy the evening so let me just go let me you know so I go go with um, I join with her virtually and everything is fine like I was just sitting there and by the end of it, um, so basically this event was called Sold Out. It was like a whole bunch of, I think it was mostly female, mostly female people um, and it was just like, oh, like they were discussing like, what was, I, I still have like notes from the first day that I was there, um, like the, first, the very first event. They were asking me like, not asking me, just like, Brutal questions. What is your priorities? You can use time as a mirror, and what is it that you spend most of your time doing? And like, what's important enough for me to spend my time on it? And you know, just the, like pretty much emphasize a holistic health, like physical, financial, social, emotional, and like obviously spiritual health. And like, um, it just seemed really. I was like, okay, it doesn't seem like it's harmful. So what happened? They said if you, they are also having a Bible study um, through Cape Town Bible College. It's for free, it's nine months, and it's like if you want to get to know God's word a bit more, um, then like leave your number and all that sort of stuff. So at first I was really, I was like, 
I don't really want to do this. I don't know. Like, but then people start giving their numbers, and the girl that came with me, she leaves her number as well. Just bear in mind also, when she left the number, like I thought that she also just someone invited her to this thing. So obviously, peer pressure, all these things. It's a tactic of SEJ. Eventually, I leave my number. I think about two days later, someone calls me. They say they're from the sold out and um, you left your number and all this other stuff. And I was just like, I honestly was not really interested in having a conversation. So I think she called me, but I, I didn't pick up or something like that. I had to call her back. And then with this girl, I just wasn't like really clicking. Like, I, nothing was really clicking with her. I was sort of kind of trying to like like pull away without being rude so don't want to disappoint people don't want to be rude and all this stuff. but honestly if you don't want to do something it's not being rude and then eventually like so two each weeks after she tells me that uh like two or three weeks maybe she says that she's too busy she has like w busy with work and she's busy with um like she just basically saying she doesn't have time to have one-on-ones -on -one with me and i was like but she said I was like, cool, and then she was like, okay, um, she has, like, someone else who's going to add me over to her, is that okay? And I'm like, yes, it's fine, and I appreciate you just, like, telling me you won't have the time for me and all that other stuff, because, yeah, anyway, so I switched over to another girl, let's just call her C, because she's the third person that I met who's actually part of this. So C um, is very open, like, off the bat, she's sharing her heart with me, telling me about her life, and, like, just, like, where she's been, and, like... I was just like, yo, she really had it rough, man. And I don't know how much of what she told me was to do. I don't know how much of her lies. Um, the ACJ has this thing with, like, if you're lying to, for God's word, that's okay. Like, it's fine to lie. And the, the reference that they use is, like, um, the story of Abraham, Isaac, Sarah, when Abraham needed to go and sacrifice Isaac. He didn't tell Sarah what he was doing because if he had told her, then she would have basically told him, no, you can't do that. They encourage you to lie to your family, to your friends, to anybody who's close to you because anybody who's not part of this organization is a seed of Satan. I was with C and she, um, we were just really, like, she was really nice. I even met up with her for a coffee once and she was really just like, I was also in a place that I, I I think I just needed a friend, I needed someone to talk to and she obviously just wanted to be that person. So it's, it felt it felt okay. Eventually time goes on and then we our sessions increase from like once a week to like twice a week. It felt very like your I can't really say no. And also they presented to me like this is God's word and you need to make time for God's word and you know so I was like okay I, I, I see a point and all this other stuff but then yeah so I think I met so the Bible class started around early December last year and then like the actual course the nine month course that they were selling like this it started around December last year and then it was three times a week three times a week Monday, Monday and Thursday it was from 6.30 till 9 and then Saturday from some 10 till 12.30 and it was very long. I'm just gonna like, I jotted down some of the rules that we had to abide by while we were in class. So the things we were, we were required to do was like number one, no eating and drinking and they were like this is time for God's word now. I mean, you don't have any distractions and I was just like two and a half hours is a long time to be sitting at your desk at the screen and just like you know anyway your camera needed to be on well they would encourage you to put your cameras on like not everybody listened but for the most part I think that it was very I felt like that, that sense of like pressure like turn your camera on um, you need to arrive on time you must have gone to the previous lesson if you didn't, you need to go to catch up sessions, which were also two and a half hours long. You were usually uploaded for participating, so I came to know that this is um, love bombing. Um, like whenever you would participate, whenever you would share, you'd be like, "Oh, thank you for sharing so well." Um, like hard reactions when you speak and you 
and I can kind of they pick up on the buzzwords that they use that you are using to like okay I understand what you're trying to say you needed to make time for this now you um, had to kind of lie to your family and I, I know that they kind of said um, like don't tell them that you're doing a Bible course tell them that you're busy with the course for school or whatever or just tell them that you're busy with I don't know what like it was so strange and it would encourage you to lie to your family members and like your friends and whatever. I was not <laughs> the most diligent student in that area. Um, like I told my parents, like, oh, I'm busy with the Bible course. I told my friends also and um, yeah, I as much as I wasn't a complete rebel and above the waters, like, you'll understand that why I came to was like okay I'm leaving this thing now um but yeah basically I didn't always abide by everything that they were saying or like telling us to do especially the lying part that part I cannot do another example of how they encouraged you to lie was like there was one time um okay let me just back there so in the bible sessions there's usually facilitators and then there's us who are um, basically the students or whatever. And then in your breakout room, you usually have like at least one facilitator. I do facilitators. And six of us appeared to be newbies. I say appeared because four of us were actually new and two of them were already there pretending to be students. I met up with them this one time, like my breakout room. Um, and we were, we had like a picnic and and then I remember my facilitator he asked me like why did you tell your family like where you're going and I was like no I'm just meeting up with friends around the bible side and he's like oh we need to talk about that and I was just like I could sense uh, I could like the the animosity I could feel he was like trying to say like oh you're doing something wrong here and then yeah anyway time goes on time starts to increase like you have these three Bible sessions and then they also want you to meet with the facilitator um, and discuss the content so that they can see that you're really digesting whatever content they're feeding us. I say content, but yeah. Um, and in those sessions, I always felt like we ended up talking about me, what I'm struggling with, what I'm battling with. At the same time, it was like a place that I could just kind of process a lot of what was going on around me. Um, and it's like, it was ears that wanted to listen, that they kind of... I don't even know if they wanted to listen, but they, that was their duty. The turning point for me was there was another event, like mid Feb. I think it's another 19th of Feb. I can't remember. Um, mid Feb this year. So the date is he calls me and he's like, "Oh, we're gonna have an event in town this Saturday." And, um, he's like, "Oh, you're gonna be there." You know, I'm just like, "You can just give me the details and I can plan around it." And you know, very chill and easy. And honestly, this is a very it's a sore topic because this was the day that I figured out or that like I came to see that I was actually under this spell. I think that's the word we, that I can use because it, it was it was a very something went down in the family household and I was just like not being the best person. But anyway, okay, so an event happened in town. We're like, okay, you know, super nice super nicely just like if you have any issues just let us know and we can see we can assist and yeah eventually like because my family they were asking me like where are you going we in town town is quite big and all this other stuff and i was just like i don't know i don't know what you're gonna do i don't know and they were just like that's weird um like we don't we haven't met these people we don't know them and all this other stuff and i'm just like yeah, I, I also don't know, like I'm not lying to you, I genuinely do not know where this place is. I do not know what we are going to be doing. Um, yeah, but they were just very, that raised like major red flags for them. And so, um, eventually they Ubered me there, the actual, the cult people, <laughs> they Ubered me to the place in town and we had our session and my family was really just kind of disappointed because it's like he didn't give us information and just went I felt like super just junk like down like I was just like yo am I not made for this like I <laughs> I was just like maybe I'm just not made for this 
Maybe I shouldn't, like, I've not going to be going to the classes and stuff, I just like my, me on my way to the event now, in the, in the Uber, I'm thinking this. The event in town happened, they also dropped me at home, and then when I got home, like, my family was not the most impressed. Um, they were basically telling me, like, this is a cult, and blah, 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 because we don't know them, and just, like, your mannerisms and stuff like that, and I was just, like, kind of still in denial. Uh, and I get back and I just like felt super down and I was just like chewing and then I see a DM from one of the girls in my class also um, she's like hey Chelsea um, I hope that you're okay um, I just want to warn you about like the gloss the gloss that are happening at the rise and um, she was basically saying that they're actually a South Korean cult and that she hopes that I get out soon and just like she sent me a bunch of resources to like look through so that I can see and like my initial reaction was just like what in the world like how could this have happened how could this have happened I, I, I struggled to wrap my head around like how these people were super nice super friendly um like and just like everything that they were doing like how this could actually be the Shinchonji cult, like how could it be? Um, and I was just like, oh, oh my word, I'm going through the, the resource and I was just like, this is also strange. I messaged this girl back, I'm like, this is so strange, like, um, like can I can we call and then can you? So I get on a call with her, basically just discussing also just like how she came about it and yeah, um, like how she actually figured it out because I. It started in December, I found the stuff out in Feb. They usually reveal this Lee Man He guy is like the promised prophet of Jesus, second coming, something like that. Like nine months in or so. That's when they usually do it. They, we don't figure this stuff out so early. So literally, I feel so grateful to God that he protected me from that. I didn't go through all nine months back to where I left off. Camera just cut me out. Um, the fact that I this all came to my attention like so early on that I can literally only see it as God's hand really just protecting me from all of this this indoctrination um because I think I know just enough I've been well just enough to be like this cannot happen to anybody else but it still is not way with my faith in God man like I've watched so many videos of people literally becoming atheists after this I saw this one guy his youtube channel is Shinshonji Skeptic um, he was in for seven years and he was like a high up like person and eventually it's just like I don't believe in God like you know um, I think just like the level of how you are able to control people with certain methods and tactics and like it's just well you feel so really you feel I felt so violated I felt so like yo I, I just want to go into a box I don't want to trust anyone ever again like um yeah um so just to backtrack the girl who initially dm'd me let's just call her a she was already in on it like no one invites you to this thing just out of like oh uh, i'm going there for the first time as well she was pretending to be first and i remember when the classes started and i didn't see her in the session i asked her like where she at and she was like no um so She's like, no, I'm probably like with a different group, I have a different facilitator and all this other stuff. And I was just like, okay, cool. And then I asked to see the person who I really feel like I think I bonded with the most. I asked her, the one who I had my one-on-ones with, asked her like, are there more like, people doing this? Like, way And, you know, and like, is there another course running? And because I asked the girl, like the first girl message, and she's like, no, she's in another group or whatever. And she was just like, no, there are other people also doing it and all this other stuff. And just like basically telling me like everything is, it's okay, it's fine as it is and no need to worry and whatever. And then I had questions all the time. I just didn't know that it was. Because they kind of have a thing where they keep newbies apart. Um, so over the festive season, there was also like, so... Classes started around 6 December and then it went like up until a week just before Christmas I think for that break 
And in that time we have to do like daily tasks or whatever, just like read this, read that, and then send your perception. Your those are words are just super cringe. Um, send your perception and all this other stuff. And then there was one time, like one of the tasks was to read a psalm and then pray it with someone. And then they were gonna give us a buddy, and I got the buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she was in my in my breakout room group, man, pretending to be new. But I know, I did not confront her. I know that she's in on it. They do not connect newbies. Um, and even then, like, she was kind of leading that session where we, like, prayed together or whatever. Um, yeah, and, like, she sent me, because they're like, oh, you, like, pray with someone. I was like, cool, it's just, like, what's it or whatever. No, this girl, like, sent me a Zoom link. And that was also, like, strange. I was like, oh, Zoom. I didn't know this. Um... Yeah, so I think that there's just, there's so many ways that they kind of, they discuss also your information with each other and share it and like trying to like figure out your thorns and whatever and sorry for this interruption, this is just me. I just looked briefly through the footage that I have and I just wanted to make sure that I was, um, I shared all the information that I wanted to share. So specifically like I mentioned that I found out this was going on I just wanted to clarify like how I left also so that if you find yourself in a situation like this and you want to leave maybe just this could help you um firstly it's on zoom so I didn't feel too much of like a, a pulling away from like not going to classes or whatever so that kind of helped but I sent a message to my facilitators I said like hey I'm not going to be attending anything related to Arise anymore I already made up my mind please don't try to contact me again and yeah so ever since then no one has tried to contact me the minute I saw that the message was sent through I blocked all of them so I don't know if they tried to be like yo what's happening or whatever but I was not going to stay and listen to that because I was just like no man um yeah i know that they did try to reach out to a few of us who left because we also were on a mission to like just alert everybody who we could remember the names that were on the the zoom call just tell them like yo this is what's up um but it, also we found that a few of them were already part or like members of this cult and they were just pretending to be new students so that was kind of also a frightening situation or frightening because I'm just like yo, I don't know if I'm sending this message to someone who's already a part of this um, but yeah um, that's just a little like I just wanted to clarify with how I live so back to the video I'm gonna make I'll speak more about just like exactly what goes on in the bubble course because i feel like that's like a whole topic no it's like i feel like there's so much that i have to share but time also is just not the greatest so um but they do heavily focus on the parables um i think it was the four field the tree the branch and the birds and then i think the last one the last lesson that i went to was like the sensor in the pot and just like breaking down those parables and like trying to convince us that what they're teaching us is like the this is the way of life now and um yeah it's really just i'm just trying to create awareness because as i said a few people that i know were approached that have been close to me and i'm just one person um and yeah like i just as i just would like to prevent more people from uh, getting involved in something that they like literally you walk into it blindly um, not realizing like what's actually going on you can argue and be like you don't know with like many things like what's going on but just the manipulation the lying the yeah it's really it's disgusting they'll approach you in like they'll approach you on LinkedIn I know someone who's approached on LinkedIn I was approached on Instagram another person on Bumble um, someone was approached in Tiger Valley Mall another person was approached that i know in like a mall like close to like in the northern suburbs as well um and another person was like approached through someone who she knew from high school so it's like 
another person from university so I just know so many people who have been kind of uh, introduced to this and some of us are just really I personally love the Word of God and I think it is a great significance in just studying it and um, like meditating on it really just understanding the Word and like spending time in it and just like you know so the things that kept me there was they were presenting it as we are studying the Word of God and we are like seeking God and like you know just really trying to please God and all this other stuff and the other thing was the community aspect of it like I said these people are really nice all the other videos I've watched also a lot of them were saying that like all the people that they've met in there like their friends and like if they leave they have no friends now um they also by the time they leave a lot of them like have just left their families or like their families are broken because they encourage you to lie to your families and your church members and like yeah another thing so they approached me firstly the event was called sold out i know the other event that someone else went to was called um soul shakers and the other one another person told me i think it was called chosen generation like that was the event itself i know that they've also gone by with me the bible size itself arise christian fellowship if you search for it online you won't find anything um now they're going by anchor um and i think like i watched like a couple videos from the states and they were they called it coffee with god and I was just, yeah, like they change their names all the time so that they, no one figures them out. If you search for them online, you won't find them. So it's really just like a really secretive operation, organization, whatever you want to call it. And cult. Also a lot of people, by the time they figure out what's actually going on, they don't want to speak about it. And yeah, I think I was like... Initially when I found out, I was like, yeah, I knew all these things, like all these red flags and all this other stuff. And I got to a point that I really just felt like as much as I had those concerns or whatever, I didn't just figure it out. So I was quite sad for a little while. Um, I was just like not okay and I think that's very reasonable. Um, if you know, I feel like a lot of people by the time, like I said, when they get out of it, they just don't want to talk about it. They don't want, they just want to forget it. and. Partially that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just forget about it, move on with my life. And But it's just like it keeps popping up and I'm like, oh, I need to know that I did whatever I could to create awareness. And so people can really just um, not walk into the thing like I do. I'll be shooting some more videos over time just to like more clarity just in depth. But this was just like how I found out that this is a cult and like how I would, how first how I got into it and how I got out of it. Um, yeah so i'll link some resources below if you just want to like um do some digging yourselves maybe you can alert your church groups as well um, because i do know they also approach church groups they were at my the place where i fellowship they also came to the leaders and like oh we have this bible study and they told them off the bat already that it's this shinshanji church of jesus and um, like, but with us they didn't tell us that initially they told us that it's just um why did they tell us like i said they were going under rise christian fellowship and yeah different tactics for different folk and i just feel like i needed to share this so yeah i hope that you are informed there is a cult there are probably more cults in cape town in the world but this one is specifically operating in cape town um yeah i think i've heard them say like leaders were saying that next to south korea south africa is the second big biggest branch so yeah that's just like some of the facts that i have and also just like sharing my experience i'll get more into detail as i said with like videos as we go forward but i thought that just share this one out and so yeah i'll link some resources below and yeah Thanks for watching.